Glad to have you join us on this edition of the show. A World Bank report states that quality education directly affects a nation's economy, income potentials, productivity, and a lot more. This simply means that for Nigeria to get ahead, she must educate her citizens. And one possible way of achieving this is by adding online education to the mix. My guest runs an online school, and she talks more about the possibilities and challenges. There is indeed a lot lined up for you. But first, some tech news and updates. This is Tech Trends, and I'm Chukameka Agbata. If you work with any new technology, you have to expect that it's going to be a little problematic. Angela Badaru. I'm a manufacturer from here in Lagos, um, manufacturing um, part, uh, spare parts and uh, uh, items in plastic for now. Using Angela Badaru, a young Nigerian manufacturer with a background in industrial design, is responding to the global pandemic by developing 3D printed face masks. This, according to him, will help address the shortage of personal protective equipment caused by the virus. One shortfall has been the availability of safety gear and protection, personal protection equipment to, um, to first of all, to begin with, uh, medical staff. And as well as those who have to be active in this period. Um, so we've swung into action, turned our little garage into a manufacturing, um, you know, integrated manufacturing now, batching out um, units and of um, protective covering to put to the doctors in the hospital, the surgeons on the, in the theatres and, and things like that. Um, With COVID-19 constantly disrupting various sectors and even routines, Angela decided to turn his production capacity towards generating the medical equipment using 3D technology, all aimed at ensuring the safety and protection of frontline health workers. Currently, we're delivering to the market because we find that these are problems the market doesn't have so much on for. Um, Personal protective equipment in overalls and in face shields, and delivering that to the market. Um, and so it was really a, a doctor friend reaching out, asking whether it was possible. And for me, it was, and for the team, we just looked at it as a look, this is a no brainer. And so we swung into action. We're happy to be satisfying them, to be keeping them safe, and we hope that we can help to reduce the number of uh, infected people within Nigeria and Africa. Neighboring countries. It's uh, easy to ban. It's a base visor with a, a 3D printed um, bracket that sits at the top of the head, and then we have all the comfort points here and um, the elastic harness that holds it all together to the head. All that comes on is we slap on on top of it. A protective shield that protects in and then just another frame at the bottom of the end. Fortunately, because we already had a manufacturing operation, we had some raw material that we could use instantly and some service user, but it's difficult sourcing materials now because of um, markets have been shut down, there's really no movement, we're able to at least get some amount of uh, mobility here and there, but if we could get a little bit more of that, then that would be great. The other thing is access to markets. Um, it's necessary to reach, and to reach we, we can prospect, we can forecast, we can 
do a market analysis. Um, but because of the lockdown, it has hampered things. So as long as, as much as we are trying to address the current issues of treating those who may be falling sick, we want to be able to look forward and say how many more could. In that effort, it would help us to prepare for what may come. Face masks are an essential protective equipment in this fight against COVID-19. But now, they are not only scarce, but expensive. While hospitals, universities and research centers across the world are looking for ways to produce face masks on a massive scale to help curb the pandemic, individuals are also contributing their own quota to help fill the gap.